Okay, these are your 5.2 video notes. Um, basically, our big goal today is to learn how to complete the square and what that process means. The process of completing the square is what will help us take a quadratic in its general form and turn it into its vertex form. So of the three forms we discussed in 5.1, there was general, there was vertex, and there was also um, factored. And we're going to work with just mainly these two, but we'll do a little bit of factored form along the way, and also we'll tie back into graphing from 5.1. So the, the goal here is to start out, before we can do the full complete square, we need to start out with just um, breaking it down to some smaller pieces. We've got some kind of unique quadratics here in general form that factor a certain way. So we're looking to do review a little bit of factoring just quickly and then move on to the full process of complete the square. Keep it in mind our goal is to go from here to here. So the first thing we're going to do is look at these unique quadratics and their factoring. And, and the deal here is basically factors of 9 that would give you 6 would be 3 and 3. So you notice they're the same factor. The factors of 49, which would give you 14, would be 7 and 7, negative 7, negative 7. Factors of 1, that would give you negative 2, negative 1, negative 1. Factors of 36, that would give you 12, positive 6, positive 6. And then kind of just a generic way of thinking about it. But typically when factors are identical, we don't write our answer as the two identical factors listed out. We actually write it as one factor squared. And that is part of our vertex form. So the idea that we can create this, because you won't always, these will not be the way the problems will start, but if we can create this situation, we can create this unique kind of quadratic that factors with two identical factors, we'll have at least a part of our complete the square. Now the K, yeah, we're going to have to come back to that, which I'll show you in a minute how that ties into the overall process. But this is something we'll have to start thinking about how we can do that. Also, what is the connection to the numbers 6, 9, and 3? And the connection that we need to figure out right away is that this number 3 is half of the middle term, and when you square it, it produces this number. So 3, three is half of 6, squared is 9. Um, negative 7 is half of negative 14, squared is 49. Negative 1 is half of negative 2, squared is 1. Positive 6 is half of 12, squared is 36. And that's a connection we want to make right away as to how we're going to make this all happen. Okay, let's do a little bit more of that idea of half the middle term squared. Then we're going to keep building and building until we get to the full process, and then we'll take you through some complete the square problems. So the process of completing the square starts with you having um, something that doesn't have that unique factoring where I have two identical factors. And we're going to leave off the third number for now and just focus on the first two terms and how we make that unique factoring happen. And the way you do it is you take your middle term again and we say we'll take half of that middle term and square it and that will produce 16. Now that means that if we were to factor this as again two separate sets of factors, we'd have x plus 4, x plus 4, but then we're going to write it as one factor squared instead of doing the two individual factors. So the idea is with the two terms and having sort of a blank spot here, how can we create this unique kind of factoring? And it's half the middle term and then square it. So again, if we do half of negative 12, which is 6 squared is 36, then these three terms would factor as x plus x minus 6, x minus 6. Even if your middle term is an odd number, the half just becomes a decimal or a fraction, so that doesn't really make too big a difference in how you're going to do it. I've got both versions here. So half of 3 is 3 halves or 1.5. You guys can stick with the, the decimals. That's fine. You don't need to do the fractions. I'm just showing you that as a way of talking about two possibilities. 3 halves squared would be square top, square bottom, so that'd be 9 fourths. Or 1.5 squared is 2.25. The factor of this, and I've got both the fraction and the decimal so we can see that. And the blue is what we're talking about. So we've got our, our single factor and then squared. And the orange up here is if we were factoring it out completely. And again, what we're trying to do at least that we're in, we haven't got to the full process yet. We're getting there, but we're trying to build up the idea of how I get the square completed. This is completing the square by doing that. But there's something else we'll have to throw on, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, and then again, here, if I'm doing half of the middle term, which is negative 5 halves or negative 2.5, um, negative 5 halves squared would be 25 fourths or negative 2.5, 6.25. You can use either one. Probably you guys will use a decimal. That's fine when you get those odd middle terms. And then here's my single factor squared, which again would come from you factoring. Also, I think it's when we get into the full-blown process of completing the square here in just a minute, it's key that you write this down on paper as you're doing your work because this number you notice is actually your factor. So half the middle term is my factor, half the middle term is my factor, and so on. If you make that connection also, it'll make getting to the end really pretty easy. Now, again, this isn't the full-blown complete the square. We're going to go to the full problem now and show you guys what is the other piece here. Again, we don't have our k, right? We've got our x minus h squared, but where is the k? So we'll start the problem with 
something that doesn't factor with two identical factors, and we'll try to create that situation. So what we're going to do to begin with is we're going to always take our number term called a constant, and we just sort of slide off to the side and create some space for ourselves. And then we go into turning this into that perfect square trinomial where we've got two factors that are identical. So the process, again, is half the middle term squared. And then what's this blank for? Well, the thing is that you just threw a number into the original equation, this 9, that didn't exist. And if you're going to put it in there, which is okay to change the form, but we have to offset it, which is called a counterbalance. And the counterbalance would be the opposite of whatever this number is. So if it's positive 9, the counterbalance is negative 9. What this does is gives me a zero effect, which means, yes, I inserted some new numbers, but I still have an overall effect of zero. And the final, when I get to the final version of this, it'll still graph the same. It'll be in a different format, but it'll look the same and have all the same characteristics. So what we're going to do now is take our three terms here, and we're going to take that down to our two identical factors. These two will now be combined as one number, so I'm trying to color code a little bit to help you guys see that. So x squared minus 6x plus 9, the two red numbers have now been combined. So one is your original constant, one is your counterbalance, but put them together. Then that blue is our unique three terms. It has two identical factors, x minus 3, x minus 3. Again, it's always good to write down half the middle term because this number and the number in your factor will be the same. And then we don't really leave it like this, right? We want to have the single factor squared idea. And now there we go. We've got x minus h squared and we've got k. And so we can do things like we did in 5.1 and say, all right, what's your vertex? Pull your vertex out of there. Um, which way does it open? It's got a positive 1a value out front. So it opens up. That gives you a 1, 3, 5 pattern of change. X is symmetry. Divide your graph in half down the middle through the vertex. And then there's your graph. So I'll complete the square. Two things, really. Change it from general to vertex. But also that's nice for graphing when you want to graph. Okay, let's check out a couple more. So again, we'll just keep running through the process, right? And what we're doing right now is working on a quadratic where the a term is 1, which makes completing the squares a little bit easier. But again, start with the getting going. Take your number term, slide it off to the side, create some space. Do half of your middle term square, which is going to create the three terms that have two identical factors. So you're creating a unique kind of factor in there. So I'll go half the middle term here. I'm just going to go half of 5 is 2.5. We'll just use a decimal. That's totally fine. But again, I just inserted a number that didn't exist in the original, so i got to offset it with what's called a counterbalance. Uh, now I'm going to take these three terms. That's going to be my special quadratic factors with two identical factors. I'm going to combine my reds. So there's my initial constant number that I slid out. There's the counterbalance. Those are going to come together as one. Um, remember, the half the middle term is always going to be your factor. So that's nice to have that on paper, so you just know that, hey, there we go. There's my two factors. Get those two written as a single factor squared. And then here we go, x minus h squared and k, grab your vertex. We'll do a little more graphing in a minute, but for now, we don't need to graph every single one of these because that's really a recap of chapter, of, excuse me, of 5.1. Okay, well, then the other kind of thing we can throw at you guys is what if the number out front is not a 1? That creates one extra step. It gives a little more thought. I don't think it's a huge deal, but it does create an extra step. So what I'll do again is I'll start by taking that number term and slide it off to the side. I have to factor the two out of the first two terms. So this is what's unique. You don't start completing the square or create that special um, three terms that has two identical factors until the number out in front is a one. So right now to get that to be a one sitting right in there, I have to take the two out. Now you can't just take it out of one spot. You gotta take it out of both of these. So the order of what I'm doing is this. I would take the 35, slide off to the side. Then I'll take two out of these two. So I can pull a two out of each Take a 2 out of 2, that gives me my 1 out front, which I want. Take a 2 out of 16, that gives me 8. Now I can start completing a square. So I'm going to go half of my middle term, negative 4 squared. Now here's the trick, or here's the catch. Not a trick, but a catch. The counterbalance. So a lot of people go, well, I just added 16, so I guess I should subtract 16. But actually, you didn't just add 16 because everything in parentheses is multiplied by 2. So you actually just added 32. So the offset of the counterbalance is negative 32. So that's something to be careful of. When this number out front is not a 1, you need to make sure that it is multiplied by whatever half the middle term squared is and then counterbalance it correctly. So I'm counterbalancing 32. Then do you basically your rewrite. So we'd say, all right, you know, there we go. We'll kind of clean up our mess here a little bit. We've got our special 3 term that has two identical factors. We'll take our two reds, put them together. Um, then factor that in blue. That 2 just comes along for the ride. Remember, half the middle term squared is your factor. That's always a great thing to write down. It just makes getting the factors easy. And then take your two factors and get them down to one factor squared. Now we're in vertex form and we can go. 
So pull my vertex out of my equation. So from equation to vertex, there's 4, 3. X is symmetry. This graph opens up because you got a positive A value out front. Your 2 is positive. Because of the 2, you got a 2, 6, 10. Remember that 2 times 1, 3, 5. A new idea just to kind of throw in there is max or min, and that's based on the way it opens. This refers to the Y value. What's your largest or smallest Y value? If your graph opens up, you're going to have a min, which means right here there's no Y below this. So you have a min Y value, and that Y value is Y equals 3, which is the Y coordinate of the vertex. So there's no Y value on your graph lower than 3, and then, of course, your actual graph. So you can com complete the square actually as a way to make your graphing a little bit easier. That vertex form is always our favorite way to graph. Okay, let's try a couple more before I wrap it up. So again, start the process, right? Take that constant term on the end and slide it out to the side. And again, I've got the two terms in black that need to be factored. We can't start complete the square until the number out in front of x squared is a 1. And so the way we accomplish that is whatever that number is. If it's not a 1, you factor it out. You take it out of the two x terms. Remember, the first step really is always take that number term on the end and just slide it off to the side. If I take a two out of negative two out of negative two, that creates my one. Take a negative two out of eight, that's negative four. And the way I know I did that right is I think if I multiply that back in, I should get these original terms. And now I'll start the process of complete the square. So half the middle term squared, half of negative four being negative two squared is four. Correctly counterbalance, right? So if you say, well, it's plus four, so I subtract four, that actually wouldn't be right. You need to, because everything in parentheses is multiplied by that negative 2, you need to say, what is the balance to this number? That number is negative 8. So negative 8's counterbalance is positive 8. So always balance, if the number is factored out front, you've got to take it times this and then balance that number. Then start the rewrite process. So now I've kind of cleaned things up again. I've got this, this looking nice. I've got my two reds put together. This is that special 3 term that has two identical factors. And remember what those two factors are going to be. Half the middle term squared. So always, I always, always write this down. Negative 2, negative 2. Then we don't write them as 2. We write them as a single factor squared. That puts us in vertex form, and we're good to go. So what's your vertex? Now remember, when you go from equation to coordinate, the parentheses will change sign. Don't forget that little fact. So I get a 2, 5 vertex. The x is symmetry. Remember, it always matches the x value of your vertex. This graph opens down because out front is a negative a value, so it opens down. Pattern change, negative 2, negative 6, negative 10, because you're multiplying 1, 3, 5 by negative 2. This graph has a max y value, which means there's no y value above the vertex. So this is the largest possible y value, which means we got a max going on, and that y value is 5. And then, of course, draw your graph. Okay, and that's going to wrap up our notes for section 5.2. I think it uh, ties great into the first day because we get to see the graphing in action. Sorry, one last thing before we go. I'm going to jump back to example number three just for a sec, and then we'll definitely wrap it up. But one thing I was going to show you guys also is don't forget about factored form. So it turns out this original function, original quadratic, factored. So here's the original. Here's its factoring. And remember, factored form. And so from factored form, we can grab our x-intercepts or our zeros by solving our two factors. And then that also, we could graph without doing complete the square if it was factorable and we wanted to go this route. Just remind you guys how that works again. And how would I know where the vertex is when I just start with this? Well, again, what I would do in this instance is because I'm equal, my um, x-intercepts are the same distance, excuse me, are an even distance apart. So they're four apart or they're each two from the axis symmetry. I know that if it's two from the axis symmetry, then it's the first two numbers in the pattern change that I would have to use to get there. So if it's 2 from the axis symmetry on both sides, and I know it would be 1 and 3, and 1 and 3 combined is 4, and that's why my vertex sits down here at negative 4. Um, you know, the focus definitely is complete the square, but just want to tie it in a little bit to factored form. And now that will be the end of our notes.